Well, I've recently changed jobs, and along with that, my wife told me that I better get myself a new plane as a reward. Now, I thought about going with Freewings F14, but let's be honest, that's still too much plane for me. So instead, I opted to go with the 70 millimeter Freewing F16. Now, this is a plane that I have loved since I was a child. The F16 is just so iconic to me. Uh, and then it's got the added benefit of when I was in the Air Force serving up at Hill Air Force Base, they flew F-16s out of there. And when we did our deployments, we were controlling those same F-16s. So for me, it's not quite as personal as Jared's Mustang, but it still has a bit of that aspect. So we're gonna crack this open. We're gonna see what I got. Honestly, I am so excited for this. I, I can't even tell you. Let's get this box open. Well, here we have it. The F-16C Fighting Falcon by Freewing. This is the 70 millimeter version. We're rocking an 80 amp ESC on a 12 blade fan. Now, I've never seen a 12 blade fan before, so this is gonna be really interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, I just, let's get this box cracked open. We're gonna see what we've got in here, cause, ah, there we go. All right, no more tape. No more tape in the way. Look at this box. Love the box. You guys do such a great job boxing up their stuff. You stay over there and look beautiful. Okay. Get some of these slats out of the way. Perfect, all right. We got ourselves a typical free wing manual, which, uh, which is to say it's a manual you can read and no comments about bubblegum. So, for, I assume there's no comments. I've never seen bubblegum comments in their stuff before. Now, 12 pages of, uh, of instructions for this plane, so hopefully it's not too involved. We've got our decal location sheet, and of course, our decal set. Now, here's, uh, here's part of the reason I chose this particular model. Because right here, we've got Hill Air Force Base. That's right, right where I came from. Couldn't help myself. Honestly made it better than the 90 for me. All right, we've got wing number one. Grab our knife here. We gotta see what this wing looks like. Hopefully we won't cut nothing. Oh, look at that. That's a good size wing, and I'm anticipating a pretty good size plane here. Uh, weighs or runs just over 81 inches in length when it's all said and done, so this is not small. As you can see, just you know, from that nose cone, <laughs> nose cone's as big as my fist. Here's our second wing. Ah, piece of garbage. We'll get out of our way here. All right, here's our vertical stabilizer and rudder. Let's take a look at this. Now one of the problems I kept running into with the, uh, the 64 millimeters is not having a rudder really makes those things a challenge to land. So when I decided I was gonna get myself a new EDF, that was one of the criteria. I must have rudder. A look at the size of this. We got our Got our servo embedded right here in the control surface, or uh, rather in the stabilizer, ready to go to that control surface. Looks like we've got a live foam hinge, which is, you know, it's a little surprising in these larger planes. Uh, you know, I, I say larger, but this thing ran $219 on sale. So, I mean, it's cheaper than a, a small E-Flight. What? It's 51, not 81. 51? The box Did I say 81? Yeah. My bad. I've been corrected. It is 51.4 inches long. Evidently I said 81, that's my mistake. I'll own it. Let's get back inside the box though. And if you don't, they will. That's true, y'all call me out on it whether I call myself out or not. 
or whether I let Jared call me out. All right, we've got carbon fiber sparring, always appreciated. And one of those little details free wings good to include, we've got a servo fisher. Gotta fish those things through somehow. All right, what is this? This is a small thing. It's a sprue of small, almost clear pieces. And I'm hoping we've got good directions on where each of these go, because that is not something I'm gonna figure out on my... Folks, those are hinges. Those are small plastic hinges. So, all right, that is something I've not seen before. Very nice. And they're, they're not the live plastic either. Uh, let me grab this back. This will run right along here. These are little pins to actually pin these hinges in. At least if I'm reading this plastic right, but that's sure what it looks like to me. So we're gonna double check, but I'm pretty sure we're looking at a thing of hinges. Alrighty. Moving to this side, we've got, got our horizontal stabilizers. Probably should have grabbed a sharper knife when I started this project, but. All right. Oh, listen to that crackle. I don't know whether that's encouraging or discouraging, but we've got ball link hinges on here, pre-installed. That's always nice. The, uh, the stabilizers are gonna glue into place on the fuse when we get to that part of the assembly. So that's gonna take a little extra time to let it you know, dry and really cure in there, but we'll make sure we get that taken care of right before we try to fly her. All right, we've got another bag of parts. What do we have? These are, looks like control linkages and some anti-slip padding and some screws for, uh, for getting her all assembled right. This bag has two more small pieces of carbon fiber. Now, these are going to go in to help secure, let me grab one of these stabilizers. This guy's gonna run right through here and actually glue between the stabilizer and the fuselage just to help strengthen up that connection a little bit more. Yes, I admit it, I cheated and looked up the manual beforehand so I would have some idea what I was getting myself into. And yet some of it's still surprising me. All right, we've got our pitot tube. Random wooden dowel, number one, which I don't remember that from the manual, but we'll find it. And these two small gray plates, which I believe go on the bottom if I'm re uh, remembering right, but we'll figure those out as, as we come to it. Wing fence, it says. So, all right. Okay. Now down in here we have a piece of tape that must be cut. Cut the tape, there we go. Ah, there we go. These are our mounting rails for ordnance. Now one thing that caught me, I'll, I'll admit it, it caught me. This aircraft does not come with the ordnance. That is a separate add-on that you can pick up. Uh, runs about $25 on Motion RC. Alternately, Thingiverse has some, some missiles you can print. Jared, would you hand that box to me over there? It's right behind you. Ah. And they come out looking roughly like this. We got our sidewinders, we got our AMRAMs. And you know, when these things first came off the printer, I thought to myself, those are huge, just how big is this plane going to be? But if we hold this up against one of the wings, <laughs> their scale, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're scale. So that is impressive. All right, get these back out of our way so we can finish this unboxing. Because we are to the main event. Oh, look at this fuse. My friends, this is a sight to behold. Oh, 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 this is, this is a good hefty plane. 
Oh, look at this. We've got, got a nice latch on the back. We're not relying on just magnets to hold the cockpit on. The pilot, the pilot actually looks pretty decent. I mean, he's not like full bodied, amazing pilot, but probably one of the best I've seen recently. Uh, cockpit's a sticker, the, the console, that's kind of meh. And we've even got tinted glass for the canopy, so. Oh, I like that. Inside here, we've got all of our servo leads have been hooked down using this piece of adhesive. Oh, it's kind of a flap so we can get them out if we need to. Got one of these free wing breakout boxes just for, for all of the mixing on everything. Whew, that is a lot of leads. And we've got our EC5 connectors because of course, this is gonna run on a six cell battery. Oh, she's gonna have so much power. This is, this is, oh, oh, folks, look in here. We got our landing gear all tucked up inside. Got our 80 amp ESC tucked down behind this vent. Oh, oh it looks like all of our air is gonna be blowing right over the top of it. That'll help keep it nice and cool. Uh, this piece of foam here will actually be removable so we can change out that motor should anything happen to it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just, oh, this is an exciting plane for me. Oh, look at that. 12 blades, you know what, we're gonna, we'll get you a close up. Oh yeah, that is good looking. <laughs> I'm speechless folks. It's not very often I have trouble finding the words, but oh, <laughs> I'm speechless. I gotta get to the build. Hopefully I'll find my words by the time I'm done. We're gonna get this put together and we'll review it afterward, but oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Let's get to it.
right, well, she's fully assembled. Of course, the astute out there will notice that we have not applied the decals. Figured that's gonna take me a couple hours to get them all lined up just the way I want them. Uh, but they'll all be on there in time for the maiden flight. For now, let's see what this thrust check is like. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, that's that's quite <laughs> that's quite the high pitched scream. I like it. Oh, all right, that's gonna be fun. Uh, she should have ample power for her flights. We'll check that out when we get out there. It, it wasn't like some of the other ones we've had where it tries to pull itself right out of the hand, but that may have, be, may have been because I had a, a pretty solid grip on there because I was worried about that happening. Uh, let's go ahead. We will go over a few of the things we spotted. Uh, one thing of disappointment, and let's get this throttle, kit, uh, throttle cut set before we uh, air commander this thing. But, uh, <laughs> One of the things we noticed is some of our decals, the, those that were pre-applied are starting to peel up. They rub back down, but you know, I, I suspect they're gonna come back up soon, so I'll have to get something on there to help those stay down. Um, not really a deal breaker, but it's just one of those, you, you would hope that they would stay on a bit better. And under this wing, you'll actually see on, on our close-up shot here that one of the decals goes right over the divot for the pylon, uh, so that's gonna have to be cut, uh, actually removed so the pylon can go in there. Uh, I have not applied the underwing pylons yet. Those are something I printed up myself. Uh, and of course, the links to all of these weapon loadout things uh, will be in the description below, so if you've got your 3D printer, you can go ahead and do those up yourself. Um, in fact, I currently have the centerline fuel tank printing. My printer says it's gonna take about four days uh, to get that totally finished, but it's because I'm printing it at a pretty fine resolution. Um, <laughs> see here, other things. Uh, wow, I don't know where to start. My, my printed uh, sidewinder slipped right on. Just absolutely beautiful. Those little wooden pegs with spotted, those are actually to help hold the pylons in place when you're gluing those in. So it's nice to know that there's a little more structure there. Um, and these wing mount pylons, those things had a nice foam to foam connection and a hard plastic casing around them just so we're not having to worry about them. In fact, with the missiles out of place, those can act as a nice wing skid for you if you have a tip stall uh, on takeoff. So that's, that's encouraging. <sighs> Oh man, what do I want to talk about? She's just, she's too pretty. I can't think of what to say. Uh, you'll see here in the cockpit area, the, uh, the rudder lead that came up from the back. That was a super simple uh, wire to fish through because of the supplied wire. And then this little cardboard, I suppose this is, this little uh, cover plate, the wire was able to just run right up through there because it is separated at the top makes access super easy, but also keeps your wires controlled, which is, you know, really nice. So, now that we've gone, you know, inside there, I've got my antenna wires. And before anybody scolds me, I will be routing those properly before I fly. I just, you know, for a, for a quick build so we can get that thrust check and see how she comes together, I, she's sufficient. Um, but let's move up here to the nose. Now, we got our tube here, and it's not glued in, but oh man, is that in tight. So I'm just going with a pressure fit on this. I, I figure I'm gonna have to replace it. <laughs> Honestly, let, uh, let's face it, I'll probably have to replace this after the Maiden. I'm, I'm that excellent of a pilot. Uh, but I've already found a, a 3D printable tube, so that's not gonna be an issue for me. Um, look in here at our nose cone snaps right off with these handy dandy magnets, which is good because like the tube, this is probably going to be one of those high replacement items. And again, there's a 3D printable version of this. It's not gonna look as nice. It's gonna probably not gonna set as neatly on the aircraft. Uh, but you know, if you're a pilot like me who's replacing this every month or so, <laughs> that could save you a few dollars. Um, just have to hook the magnets in. So moving back, we've got this, this absolutely gorgeous air scoop. All right, we're gonna roll her over. 
because there's a lot to talk about on the bottom of this aircraft. First, we've got this gorgeous air scoop. Now, it looks great, it looks scale. One of the things of note though, is that due to the shape of this model, uh, I know a lot of people are converting their EDFs over to belly landers to try to get that extra performance, especially on some of the, the fixed uh, gear models that are out there, just to reduce drag, but this one's not going to do that well. This scoop, I, I'm concerned it's gonna snag dirt, it's gonna snag water if that's on the ground, and it's gonna suck that right through the motor. That's gonna cause extra damage to the blades and the, and the motor itself. We don't want that. Uh, so this is probably gonna be one we have to stick with the landing gear on, uh, you know, for the life of the, of the aircraft, which does almost become an issue with this landing gear. We, we've got some, some pretty hard, solid tires, so that's great for your takeoff and landing at high Circle speed, but it doesn't gears. have a lot of give on those, on those harder landings like I'm prone to. There is an upgraded uh, wheel set, or rather a, a whole landing gear set. Runs, I believe, $45 on Motion RC's site. I'm probably gonna invest in that just because I, I think it will dramatically improve the life of this, of this aircraft. Um, and that should get rid of this cast plastic uh, strut look that we've got over just the straight metal bars that are holding all the wheels. Now, normally I would be pretty disappointed in that, but again, this model costs $219. I mean, that's like, that's less than E-Flight price tag. So I, I really, I can't complain. <laughs> um, it, it, this, this is the landing gear I expect at that price point. So it, it's not a complaint for me. Uh, we did figure out exactly where these plates go. Two screws each, they, they rock right in. This is another reason that the belly landing is really not gonna work on this model, uh, unless you remove those, in which case you, you lose some of that scale look. Um, we've got here our channels for the, for the pylons. Like I said, we've got these little holes here. Now, my kit only came with two of those random wooden posts. Uh, looking at this, I would probably need four if I wanted to mount two posts each. Uh, I think we could probably get away with one, but it would be nice to have them all. Honestly, a barbecue skewer, you can cut that down and accomplish the same thing, but you know, if, if, it, if it's got spots for, for four posts, I, I would expect four posts to be included. Who knows, maybe the other two come with the, <laughs> with the ordnance kit. All right, moving back, we've got, again, live foam hinges on these aileron surfaces. Aileron. Great throws there. They don't seem super exaggerated like the F-22s did, which, you know, <laughs> we got that dialed down, but it, it took a little doing. Now, you'll notice that there are no flaps on this plane, and for Wyatt, that would be a deal breaker. For me, I've actually been getting better landings without the flaps than I've been getting with them. And the F-16, the actual aircraft doesn't have flaps. So, you know, if, if you want scale, you can't have flaps on this model. I'm totally good with that. Jared suggested pop, possibly going with flaperons. I don't think I'll do that. Uh, like I say, I've been getting better results without flaps on landing. Unless, of course, I find that she's coming in too hot and then I'll have to figure out something to do just to help slow her down. Uh, coming back to our elevators here, we've got these absolutely gorgeous ball link hinged uh, rods. Okay. They're kind of long, so they included these carbon fiber spars to go over that wire just to make sure that it's not bending. That's a nice touch. Uh, the, you know, they didn't really have to do that, but if they hadn't, we would have had to come up with something for it. So I appreciate that they took that on themselves and we don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> All right, let's flip her back over. Whew. She's a hard one to fit on this stand just because the gear fits like perfectly. <laughs> but she does fit. So since we're already back here at the tail, let's talk about the rudder here. We've got this big black exposed servo and there is not any kind of a covering that's gonna mask that. I mean, that's right in line with where our base markings are gonna go on this model. Uh, I'm concerned that where most of it is clear with the exception of the letters themselves, we're actually going to see that servo a lot more than I would like. I'm probably gonna have to find some kind of matching paint um, to actually cover that up with before I put the decals on. 
yet another one of the reasons that I opted to hold off on those. So that's kind of, you know, that, that, that's a quick stem to stern of the plane itself. But one of the things that I think would be really interesting to see on this is we've got that E-Flight FMS F-15 here. Look at that size difference. I mean, <laughs> we've got, what, 12 inches, 12, 14 inches length difference. 64 millimeter EDF model. It's a $40 price difference between the two, although this one does come with the receiver, uh, safe enabled receiver pre-installed on it. I don't know, I'm expecting a lot better performance out of my F-16 here. I may go ahead and put an Eagle Tree in there just to get some of that stabilization that the F-15 is offering, but that's an optional thing to me. I know a lot of people have been complaining about Spectrum products lately. I personally haven't had any issues with them, but if that's a concern for you, that, you know, at that point, you're spending extra, <laughs> extra money to have that receiver pre-installed and you're not gonna use it. So definitely look at the upgrade. Again, $219 for, the, for this big, beautiful bird. Or, sorry, big old beautiful bird, yes. <laughs> of course, the motors, there's no comparison between the two. The uh, 64 is never gonna have the thrust that this 70's got. In fact, when we did the thrust check earlier, I didn't notice it, but the plane blew my can of Mountain Dew over on the bench. I had to take a quick break uh, from talking and actually clean that up after the thrust check. So I'm gonna turn her around so that doesn't happen again, because I, I wanna actually feel, you know, get my hand in here, feel what we've got going. And let's see here, what's gonna blow out over there? All right, let's see safe. Oh! Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so when I did the first thrust check, I'm like, all right, yeah, that should lift her up. No, folks, this is ridiculous. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of juice coming out of that little pipe. We got some nice little compression going on down here. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm so enthralled with this player, I, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> that, that should be more than enough power. This is, this is the, the 6S Pro version of the model. There's actually an upgraded version, uh, which I, if I remember right, uses an eight cell battery instead of the six cell I'm running on. Um, yeah, I, I can't even imagine what kind of thrust we would be looking at with that upgrade. Um, unlike my F-22, I'm not going to put an eight cell in on this power setup and see what happens. I, I don't wanna burn it out. Um, <laughs> and honestly, right now, I don't feel like I could handle that eight cell power. Again, that's one of the reasons I didn't go with the, uh, the Tomcat is I, you know, smaller, a little bit lower power. Something I can throw on my car. I, I don't know if you've seen that F-14 in person. That thing is massive, it would fill this table. <laughs> so so this, is, this is definitely much more my, my size, my price point, and uses batteries that we already have a few of, uh, thanks to those ME262s that we picked up last year. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out to the flight line. <laughs> Again, it's something I've loved since I was a kid. It's something that I heard every day when I was deployed, something that we saw all the time up at Hill. And one of the planes I love looking at when I go up to the museum up there. So, you know, keep flying. We're gonna get this thing out there, do the maiden flight, and I'm just gonna leave you with the miniaturized sound of freedom. Diggs, what?